Hi, I'm Dr. Selena Fisk, and welcome to this episode of Make Data Talk. In this podcast, I help to turn your spreadsheets into stories in a way that is practical, accessible, and hopefully more useful than your grade nine maths textbook. Today, I'm going to be riffing about the importance of being data informed and why I fiercely advocate for this rather than being data driven. So whenever I'm invited on other people's podcasts, the question that I'm probably asked more than anything else is to explain the distinction that I make between data informed and data driven and why I think it's so important. So I thought this was a really important episode to lead with because as I say, it's one of those things that um, I guess comes up a lot in my work and I'm asked a lot about. So for me, I think it's really important that we use the language data informed and that we completely actually remove the language of being data driven um, from our vocabulary. I think about being data driven kind of almost like having a, a horse having blinkers on. So in a horse race, horses race around the track and they race towards a finish line and some of them have blinkers on. And those blinkers are put on there by the trainers. And the idea is that as those horses are sprinting towards the finish line in particular, those blinkers, those little shields that are sitting on the outside of their eyes, are stopping them from being distracted by the things that are happening around them. So the other jockeys, the riders, um, the other horses. But the reality is, um, while they might, I guess, shield the horse from some of those distractions, the reality is that the position that they're in and the position of those other horses and the jockeys actually matter and determine ultimately where the horse wearing the blinkers ends up and where they finish at the end of the race. When we are data informed, though, it's like having the blinkers off and being able to, I guess, make um, a more unbalanced judgment about what's going on and being able to see the whole picture and not solely focused on one thing. So when horses are wearing those blinkers, the, the idea, if they're leading, is that they're just focusing on that finish line and they're sprinting as hard as they can towards that, that one kind of marker to win the race. And we don't want to do that with using data. And I think that the language around being data driven almost implies that that's what we do, that we're really driven by this external motivator or external target or this this single metric and we're doing everything we possibly can, everything we have to do to get there. And I just don't think that's hugely useful for us as humans and I don't think it's hugely useful for us in organisations where we're trying to build cultures where people don't fear data and they're really open to it and they're happy to engage in the conversations. So for me, this is one of my non-negotiables. Uh, I, have, I have a couple of non-negotiables around the way I interact with data and the way I use it and this certainly sits very, very close um, to my heart and is one of my non-negotiables. The reason for me was that when I first started using data, I was working in a workplace where they were incredibly data driven. What it meant as a middle leader in the organization I worked in was that we had a single metric that we had to focus on and we had to improve year on year. And the idea was that essentially after a 12 month period, this one metric would come out and our success was essentially determined by whether or not we hit our target and hit this single metric at the end of the year. Now, it was incredibly driven by data. All of the decisions that were made in that school were geared towards success in this final metric that was happening at the end. And our monthly meetings, in some cases even weekly meetings, were all centered around the things that we were doing to try and hit that mark. If we did achieve that target, we kind of got a bit of a pat on the back. And if we didn't achieve it, then we were micromanaged and performance managed for the next 12 months. Now, I was lucky that that never happened to me um, because I actually came into a team where they hadn't had very good results in the previous years. So my job was to improve them, uh, but it was actually starting from quite a low benchmark. So I was kind of almost lucky in that regard. But there were people who were performance managed because they didn't hit that target. And it was really incredibly negative, an incredibly negative experience for the people who went through that, but also for the culture more broadly, because other staff were looking at this person and these people being micromanaged and performance managed for the next 12 months. And it was really heartbreaking. And that often happened to really um, good people. And people who had tried really hard, they just had missed the mark on that occasion. What it meant was that everybody else looking at this happening to other people kind of questioned, well, what's what are they going to do to me? 
you know, what's going to happen if I don't hit that result at the end of the 12 months? And it was incredibly high pressure situation, uh, really high expectations on hitting those targets. Um, and to be honest, there was just a whole lot of burnout and a really negative culture all around. On the flip side, when we're data informed, we absolutely value those quantitative metrics and we set goals and we work towards achieving them. And we really tap into that idea of what are those lag measures in the data that we're trying to aim, where we're aiming to try and improve down the track. And what are those lead indicators that we're going to be collecting data on uh, throughout the journey? But we don't ever want to just solely connect one result or one metric to a single team or a single individual. When we're data informed, what we do is we take the metrics and we pay attention to them and we value them. And we take into consideration what we know about the context, about the market, about geography, about the strengths in the teams, about the I guess the combination of the different personalities and the people in the teams, the different product types that we've been releasing, all of those different contextual pieces, which many of those could actually fit into qualitative data. But we're taking in all of that additional information as well as the metrics, the numbers themselves, to you, and we're using them collectively to inform our decision making. But we're also taking into consideration the experience that people bring and the things that they've tried, what they know has worked in the past, what hasn't been tried before, what they've seen had some have some success in another organization that's similar to them or what they've seen another organization try that hasn't worked for them. It could be that they tap into case studies and research and they draw on different information from all of those different sources. And so when we're informed by data, it's not just a single metric that we're aiming to achieve or to hit at the end. We're combining the quantitative metrics with the context and the qualitative information and professional experience. And we're packaging all of that up together and we're using it to inform the decisions that we make and, uh, and the actions that we take. I just want to zoom in a little bit on the inclusion of professional experience. Um, when we're data informed obviously we don't want people to be completely relying on anecdotes and experience to guide the the decisions that they make and the actions that they take we absolutely want them to be objective and, and tapping into some of that quantitative data as well but when we are driven by data there's almost an expectation that that professional experience and expertise is irrelevant because we're just trying to hit that final goal at the end. Whereas when we talk about being informed by the data and we really harness that professional experience, we give people the opportunity to be involved in conversations, to talk about what they've seen work, what they've seen not work, what they've seen happen in in previous experience and in past uh, roles and jobs. That's really acknowledging them as humans and acknowledging the wealth of experience that they're bringing uh, to the conversation and to the journey. However, if we're driven by data, we're essentially ignoring that and we're almost implicitly saying it doesn't matter if you've tried this before, it doesn't matter if you're brand new in this career, it doesn't matter that you've got 30 or, you know, if you've got 30 years experience, we're treating you all the same. And we don't want to be like that. That's not how we create fulfilled employees who want to keep showing up for us and keep working towards um, our goals and working to, you know, better the the organization, better our teams, uh, provide a better service for our clients. So we certainly want to make sure that we're respecting um, and acknowledging that professional experience and how valuable it is. I mentioned earlier on the impact that this process had for me in my workplace around culture. And it's really important when we think about developing a culture that is using data, that we're being really open with our team and with our employees that we are wanting to tap into their professional experience. We do respect their wisdom and what they bring to the table. And we're absolutely going to be using the quantitative data, but we're also going to be recognizing the context and all of those different challenges and the qualitative data that's sitting around it as well. That then builds and starts to build a culture where people recognize that leaders are really cognizant of those additional challenges and all of those, I guess, the nuances that make the role in the organization unique to what they are and and who they are and what they do. And it reinforces that they're not going to be held solely responsible for a single metric when we know that so many other factors contribute to whether or not we hit a target. The final thing that I wanted to mention about 
the words and the phrasing of being data informed rather than data driven is that as we know in our workplaces, language absolutely matters. It's really important that we get our language right. We know that we have people in our organizations who we're asking to use data, we're asking them to engage with data, and maybe it's the first time for them. And the reality is, is that there's actually a lot of people in our world who fear numbers and they fear data. So just have a bit of a think. I'm assuming that if you're listening to this episode, uh, you probably don't fall into that camp. But if you were to go to an employee who was really fearful of data and how it was going to be used, and you turned up one day and you said, hey, so now we're going to be data driven. And it's going to be great. And you're all enthusiastic about being driven by data. I mean, in my head, I can just physically see that person who's fearful of data almost just like shrinking into their shell. Um, it's much friendlier language. It's much more open and inclusive language when we talk about the fact that we are data informed and being able to articulate that belief in the fact that actually by being informed by data, we're using the quantitative, we're using the qualitative in the context, we're tapping into professional experience. If I'm there already fearful of data, being told that we're going to be informed by it um, is far less intimidating than being told that we're driven by it. So one little quick thing that you can take out of today's episode is that from now on, you never use the words data driven again, you stop right now, and we only ever use data informed moving forward. And then the second challenge is to actually explain the difference to other people and talk about the fact that when we're informed by data, we're tapping into all of those wonderful other rich information sources as well. Um, and we really need people's professional experience and wisdom um, to make good decisions and to take good actions. Thanks for joining me for this episode on Make Data Talk. If you want to get in touch, feel free to find me on LinkedIn at Dr. Selena Fisk. Check out my other podcast, A Beautiful Mind. And if you really loved it, feel free to drop me a quick review so other people know how to find it. Talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.